could see all the goats eating up everything. I mean, the devastation on the land was so, so in your face that everybody began to understand that this island was dying. But if you take the island of Oahu, it's, it's, you can't see it, yeah. but it's happening. You know, the resources are all disappearing and it's becoming less and less. And the pressure on these resources are getting to the point where, in fact, just the overpopulation, you know, it's like the continental mentality that everything is endless doesn't work here because nothing is endless. We're in the middle of the Pacific on little dots. Yeah. So the Hawaiians always knew that the resources was finite. Right. So their relationship with the resource was really a spiritual relationship in order for it to survive. Because the Hawaiians knew that you, they wouldn't be able to survive if the resources didn't survive. Whereas now it's, it's a continental mentality that just keep using it. Yeah. And yeah. the more you want profit, the more you got to use. So the profit motivation overtakes the common sense motivation of you got to take care of your resources yeah. for, the, for the future generation. So now it's all short term profit motivation. That, and it's scary what's, what's happening to our, our island. So in me, I see the same thing that I saw on Kaha'olawe where we don't watch out, we're going to be killing our islands. Yeah. You know, and these places don't belong to us. It belongs to the next generation and the next generation. So, you know, you, if we don't do anything, we're going to lose all of this. So, you've got to do something. Yeah. No, and I know, <laughs> like, now you're, you're, you're fighting about, like, GMO stopping Monsanto's. And I think of it similar, like you're saying, to Kaho'olawe, because that's the military. That was very powerful. But corporations today oh. are very, very powerful because it's global, you know. These corporations, I don't think people can even fathom how powerful these corporations are. I mean, yeah, the United States military, United States, but these corporations, you put all their budgets together that are controlling yeah. the seeds and the food that we eat, they got bigger budgets than the United States. Yeah. These, these guys are all over the world. Yeah. But Hawaii has become the home base. All five of the major corporations that are trying to control the seas of the world are all in Hawaii. That's so this is ground zero for the rest of the world in this move to control the seeds of Because of right. if they control eating. the seeds, they control the oh, food supply, I mean, right? It's easy to see, you know, it's like he who controls the seed controls the food. And if you control the food, my God, you're going to be the most powerful things on, on earth. Yeah. We all got to eat. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, well, that's an impossible dream to control the food. It's happening. Yeah. So that's why I get so involved in GMOs. You know, like people asking, oh, I thought you was involved in Hawaiian things. Why are you doing GMOs? You know, it's like, because, you know, if, if you boil everything down, the GMOs is, is having a negative impact on our health. Mm -hmm. For one thing, and that's, that's our kids, that's our future. You know, it's like if I, I've been eating GMOs for the last 15, 20 years, so I'm about the end of my life, so it's no big deal. But these kids that are coming up, they're going to be eating GMOs the rest of their lives, and, and nobody understands the impacts. This is one huge experiment going on. Right. There, there have been absolutely no human studies on the impacts of these GMOs, none whatsoever. They're now beginning to do studies on animals and they're coming out like scary. The impacts are scary. So this is like researchers are doing it because I know the government. The government won't do it. the government is not doing it because the government already said from day one, because of political influences on the top, and I'm on the top I'm saying like in Washington DC, right. that GMOs are substantially equivalent. In other words, there's no difference between a GMO food and the, and the natural foods. <gasps> it, it's politically, they made that determination. So that took away all of the controls, made everybody go, no worry about this thing. Mm -hmm. And so the government is like nothing. So the independent guys are out there trying to do these research stuff. 
And Monsanto goes in there and they sue them and they, and they give them bad names and they criticize them. So we can't get any good information. Then we're all eating this stuff. We yeah. don't know what we're eating. We don't know how much we're eating. So there's no way to trace any of our diseases that are spiking, right? I mean, asthmas and allergies and diabetes and all these kinds of things that food causes. Yeah. You cannot trace them. Yeah. So the mantra from them is, there's no proof. There is not one single disease that's come from our foods because you cannot trace it back. Yeah. Because there's no link to any of the foods because nobody knows what you're right. eating. So if I go to the doctor and I'm having all these problems, medical problems, the doctor asks me these questions, oh, what have you been eating? What are, you know, all right. these questions that allow them to trace back your disease. You cannot. Right, right. So we're saying, my God, we gotta label these foods right. so that we can start tracing back right. how the impacts, what the impacts are on, on us. Right. And then I can also choose as a consumer what I wanna buy. I have no choice right now because I don't know what, what I'm eating. That's true. But the government refuses to pass a law to label GMOs. Mm. I was thinking just for the audience, GMO is genetically modified organisms, right? And then they're infusing like genes from different, even animals, right, into the food. Like they could put right. fish things into right. a vegetable, right? We're, we're sitting here in nature. Nature has, I mean, Trees are going to be trees, you know, the grass is going to be grass and you cannot have the genes from this grass become, you know, I mean, there, there are boundaries where nature doesn't cross. The birds are the birds and they give right. birth to birds. Right. So everything is like balanced and has its course. And then man comes here and they start taking those cells and taking the DNA from those cells and crossing them. Right and putting this grass in the tree and the bird stuff in the tree and the stuff from the ocean and the stuff on the land trying to create so now man has become God and they think they're smart about it but man it's like if you put something in like they're doing a lot of the seeds right they're putting things in seeds that shouldn't be in there but they can cross the barrier they force them in with these guns and it's like scary because they're not sure what's going to come out and they don't understand nature enough to really understand what's going on but it's substantially equivalent according to the government so for us it's like once you put it in nature it goes right but the, the other things that they used to do as chemical companies you could always stop them because it wasn't inbred into nature you could stop them from making oh, the chemicals right and say no you cannot use ddt anymore Right. So you can stop it. Right. But in this case, once you set it into nature, you cannot recall it. Right. So this thing has huge implications. Yeah. And yet they're able to just go on their merry way. They, they, they keep yeah. passing laws that allow them to do all these things that should be tested. It shouldn't be tested on us. Like we're right now the test animals. Yeah. We're the guinea Gu pigs. Yeah. It's a massive test that they're doing. Yeah. And they're on our island of Molokai and they're, test, they're growing these huge fields of these things and it's all tests. And if these things go wrong, there's nothing to keep them within these fields. It'll go. Right. So, so we're, we're like trying to protect ourselves because the government won't do it. Because right. I know that seeds, if they fly, like if you're growing corn, right? And the, and the seeds can fly or like wheat right it can go in somebody else's land and they won't know it right and then yeah, their I mean, land be, their things become gmos the, the ones that take everything all over is the bees oh. the bees come in and they pollinate yeah. and they'll take the pollination to wherever they're going so you cannot stop these things i mean unless yeah. we kill all the bees these things are gonna go all over right. the place Right. And the birds do the same thing, right? right? And the right. wind does the same thing. Right. Right. So nature spreads things all over the place. Yeah. And you cannot yeah. stop it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just want to go back to that other point I was thinking of is when you're saying with the GMOs and you go to the doctor and they don't know what's wrong, like let's say somebody is allergic to fish, but they put the fish gene in and some other kind of vegetable, right? right? Isn't that right. what is happening? And then right. they eat. A tomato but it may right. have a fish gene right? right and then they go to the doctor and they're asking what did you eat 
you don't you you don't say fish, so then they don't know what's wrong right. with you, right? It's, I you mean, cannot, that's the you danger. You can't track it. Yeah. That, and secrecy is a big thing with the GMO companies. Everything is secret. Yeah. So. Yeah, if it wasn't bad, why not say? You know, right? I I grew up as a as a person who loved farmers, because Ho'olehua, where we live, is all farmers, and we're all growing food. And yeah. we all, you know, it's like, yes, farmers, production, feeding people. You know, you feel proud after yeah. a day's work. Yeah. And now our fields are like, these chemical companies have taken over all our fields, and there's no food. You know, and then people saying, wow, we only got two weeks worth of food. If the barges stop coming, we better, we better change that. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's going to be panic over here. You know, it's like, wow, we can't have that. So we need to have food security. And that was like, since 2009, they've been saying that. And nobody's done anything about food security. They've gone the opposite direction. Last year, they had these big fights about using our private ag lands to put houses on them. Yeah. And the fight ended up, yeah, we're going to put houses on them. You guys, there's lots of farmland. Look, go Konia. Konia got all these farmlands. We don't need these over here. We can put houses on them. And you drive up to Konia. And all the farmlands up in Konia, most of the farmlands are all chemical companies growing seeds. And all these seeds are being exported. Where's the food? Yeah. You know, I mean, they're going to wait until there's a panic and everybody starts <laughs> stealing things from each other and going crazy trying to find food. You know, it's like, where's the leadership? If you go to the legislature, the leadership is saying, no. The, the, the economy, the agricultural economy of the state is based on these seed companies. They're supporting the seed companies. Say, so, okay, then label the bloody thing so we know what we're eating. Yeah. No, no hearings on labeling. Yeah, yeah. What's up with that? I mean, I, it's like 90% of the people want to know what they're eating. They have a right to know what they're eating, Mr. Legislator. Mm -hmm. No, you can't have a hearing on it. Something is wrong with that picture. Something yeah. is terribly wrong with that picture. Yeah. How can the people you elect not allow you to know what you're eating? What's, right. what's you know, you gotta be suspect to that. Yeah. You know, and why we're all here saying to you, label the food, who's telling you not to label it? And why are you listening to them? Yeah. You know, so that's a question. And it's election time, so we should be asking all of the guys who want our vote. What's your stand on labeling? Are you right. for us or are you for them? Right. You know, that's a right. simple question that we should be asking right. our elected officials now when they want our votes. Right. Once they get in, it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> but we're getting ready for January. We want to do something in January when the legislature starts. Yeah. We're, we're organizing to get All ready right. for that. But I also know you're running for OHA this year. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be a politician. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you decide you want to do this now? All the things I've been talking about yeah. kept me up at night. You know, it's like, we got to do something. And nobody, none of the politicians want to make GMOs their issue. So I'm saying, I'm going to make this my issue. I was doing it as a guy on the street, organizing Label It Hawaii, you know. And I didn't have any resources, so nobody, you know, we couldn't get anybody to listen. So I decided I'm going to get into the Office of Hawaiian Affairs because as a Hawaiian, I want to protect my land. Mm -hmm. Because these guys are farming. I just told you the story of how it's bad for people. Yeah. But the way they're farming is killing our land. It's, it's all washing down into our reefs. It's, it's the dust that they're farming and the chemicals are going in the air because of, of warm air and it just floats over our forests and then it rains down and it's going into our water. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I gotta do something. So I'm going, you know, as a Hawaiian, I want to go into the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and do the same thing I did with Kaho Olave, be a champion for the land, shine the light on the problem, and try to have, gather people together to solve this problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I... And it affects not only Hawaiians, everybody oh, who's everybody. living. I mean, I'm just using the Hawaiian resources yeah. and structure because I know that structure. Yeah. to get in there and use those resources to help protect our future generations, you know, that wants to use these islands to survive. Yeah. And, yeah. and these guys are misusing, these corporations are misusing our resources. They're going to, as soon as it's all screwed up, they're going to leave. 
you know, they're all over yeah. the world. So right. Hawaii has good soil, good water, and it's the wild, wild west. There is not one single law to regulate GMOs in the state. Not one. They won't even have a hearing on it. So they're here like, yeah, you know, we can do whatever